Welcome, everyone, to a March Madness chat. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by NCAA Senior Vice President Dan Gavitt, Mitch Barnhart, the Kentucky Athletic Director and the Chair of the 2021 NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament Selection Committee, and Craig Robinson, newly named the Executive Director of the National Association of Basketball Coaches, a former member of the New York Knicks organization, the Milwaukee Bucks, and, of course, a former head coach at Oregon State and Brown. Uh, Dan, obviously, there is a lot in the news. Let's deal with our sport here in college basketball. First, where are we right now here in almost mid-August in terms of anticipating when the season could start? Well, Andy, you know, we've been working on contingencies and uh, studying what it is that makes the most sense for college basketball for months now. We're five months exactly from the date that the, the tournament was canceled uh, back in March. And we're three months away from the scheduled start of the college basketball season. We recognize what's going on around the country and have been making plans and contingencies for uh, a change if necessary. Um, but, you know, we're also, as we've said all through the summer, trying to exercise patience, make sure we learn as much as we can from all of the other sports that are uh, happening right now notably the NBA and the WNBA and our sport um, and the success that they are having and making sure we make uh, informed and responsible decisions in a timely fashion. So remain very confident that we're going to have a basketball season, albeit different uh, and, and maybe altered as necessary by the virus that we don't control. Of course, the virus controls us. Um, and then leading into March Madness, uh, very confident that's going to happen and all sorts of different contingencies that are being considered. Craig, you, you just started this gig, and you've already, I know, been a part of, there have been some high-profile Thursday calls with a lot of Hall of Famers on there in terms of, you know, how everyone's going to handle this, from workouts to scheduling to what should happen. Uh, non-related, obviously, some issues non-related to, to COVID-19 and certainly issues dealing with social injustice. Um, but as it relates to COVID-19, what are you hearing from the membership about how they're handling this new normal of masks and gloves and, and sort of mini workouts that are still going on as we speak? Well, Andy, it's, uh, it's, it's great to be here and it's great to be here with, with all of you. Uh, what we're really trying to get our, our membership to focus on is the mental health of our, our student athletes, right? Trying to get players to um, a place where they feel comfortable in this uncertainty. And the, the way you do it is you communicate with them and you're transparent with them. And, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's going to take the whole uh, basketball community. And, and I echo with, 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 both, with what both Mitch and Dan have said. We need to be patient we need to be flexible, and those are those are two other tenets that we're passing along to our membership. Stay flexible, be ready when the time comes to play, and uh, and 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 I think we will we we'll, we have enough smart people at the table. We'll come up with some great ideas. So let's springboard off of that, and and you mentioned the word bubble, which for all of us used to have just the connotation of trying to get in the NCAA tournament. Um, obviously, it is working at the professional level with the NBA, the WNBA, the MLS, the NHL in Canada. Um, obviously, it's not working, not having a bubble for the most part in Major League Baseball. They've had issues. We don't know what's going to happen with the NFL. So, Mitch, to you first, and then Dan, regular season and postseason. Help, help some people understand, Mitch, why just throwing out Put everyone in a bubble for the whole season, for the semester. Why that is difficult to do with college student athletes. Mitch, you go first, please. Well, I think you hit the, the two key words. There's college student. That is part of the equation. We never forget that. That we, we have got an opportunity to educate our young people. They're still going to class. They've still got school. Some of them are online. Some of them are in classes. Some of that's hybrid. So we've got to pay attention to college, being a college student. That is still a part of this process that we will have to factor in. Uh, there's multiple things. And the committee has been very thoughtful under Dan's leadership of saying, okay, what will it look like in 2021? What do we do? Are we able to begin the season in 
our normal format? Are we going to have to adjust? Uh, Doc Rivers made a great comment before they ever started this NBA process. He said, whoever wins this championship will have really earned it because this is the most unique format, unique set of circumstances ever. And it may not seem fair. He said, whatever it is we do, it may not be fair, but we're going to go on and someone's going to win a very unique very hard fought championship. I thought that's pretty thoughtful. No matter what sport we have going on, it might not be fair. You might look at this and say, oh my word, that is not fair. But at the end of the day, we're going to find a way to play a championship and we're going to get through this thing. And, and it may look a little different to Dan's point. It might be uh, a place where we are, we're bringing folks together. It might be still in the same format. I hope we can go and do what we've done and we have all the original sites and we're marching our way through March Madness and get to a Final Four. It could look very different. Um, but, at you know, we've watched the bubbles, as you said, Andy. We've, we've watched the bubbles. And we've said, you know, that that's working and that's not working. And, and to Dan's point, we will have more information and more time. And everyone's expecting us to have good answers. And I will tell you, the committee is absolutely focused on every call that we have of finding a way and a pathway forward. I think Mitch made some fantastic points in his leadership of the committee and their focus on this. On a, we're, to, we're meeting every couple of weeks on calls has been phenomenal. Um, you know, we're going to end up, I'm sure, with about four or five different contingencies. And, and, and you know, and they're going to be exercised in a timely fashion when or if they're needed to be. You know, our, our best hope is that we have the tournament as scheduled and with some fans or you know, in attendance and, and have 68 teams and, and crown a national champion in that way. Um, but we'll have decision points along the way, including, uh, you know, getting to a, a, a potential bubble-like situation if that's the only way to run the tournament safely and responsibly to determine a national champion. Um, will that be challenged to your question, Andy? Sure, because as Mitch notes, uh, they're students and they have to be in class when class is in attendance. Um, but, you know, there's an awful lot we can learn also from um, modified bubbles and what the NBA and WNBA has done and Major League Soccer and other, other sports that have exercised that kind of uh, rig rigor around uh, health and safety. And uh, we're learning more by the week about that. You know, I, I think that there's some opportunity in the season as well, uh, certainly when classes are in full session. A true bubble is just not a reality for college sports. Um, but during the month of late November and into December, when most of our schools it, uh, are going to be in virtual learning environments and or then after exams during the traditional holiday break, that is potentially an opportunity to create regionalized and very uh, controlled environments in bubble-like scenarios uh, for for non-conference or conference games. And I know some conferences have made decisions about waiting until January and we're respectful of those decisions, but we need to take advantage of opportunities as well. Uh, and, and to Mitch's uh, excellent point, I think, you know, while this is gonna be an imperfect season, it's gonna be an imperfect tournament. Um, fairness and equity does not know, uh, the virus does not know fairness and equity. And we need to, you know, be responsible and take advantage of the opportunities and windows that we have uh, when they're there uh, for us to get the season in and to get the tournament in in a very safe and responsible way. We know coaches uh, don't like when things aren't on a level level playing court. Um, how would you advise the membership that there may be instances where it is not fair and Team X may play, you know, 20 games or 25 and Team Y may pay play 30 and you're just going to have to deal with that. Yeah. And you're right. You know, we as coaches uh, have a hard time with inequity. Uh, but I think as, as, as Dan so rightly mentioned, the, the, the COVID doesn't take equity into account. Right. And if we want to have a season, we all need to chip in and do whatever we can do, even if it's not fair to, to make this season happen. So what we're trying to do as an, or as an association is remind our membership regularly that, you know, this is going to be imperfect. It's not going to be perfectly fair, but the, 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 the real focus should be on trying to get our, our, our student athletes who are, have been working toward this season and who have missed a lot of last season, uh, something 
to, to salvage. And it, it, it may not be perfect, but, um, you know, we all have to chip in and, and make this thing work. And, and, it, 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 and the feedback has been great. Uh, I, I, I haven't run into yet any coaches who were like um, s- s- negative about this. Everyone's hopeful uh, and as they should be. And, uh, and it's great for our student athletes because when the coaches are hopeful, then that permeates down to the student athletes. So, uh, you know, we, we want to we hear all the ideas and, uh, and we're, we're there to be supportive. So Mitch, to Dan's point, uh, at the conference level, because the conferences would control, obviously, the regular season, how viable uh, are sort of mini bubbles when uh, essentially every student, for the most part, will be home after Thanksgiving, uh, whether you're done with the first semester or first quarter or just doing exams into early December, how could a potential mini bubble work during that gap of time when really no one's on campus? Yeah, so Andy, I don't know whether it would be, it, I think you've got a lot of institutional decisions and you're gonna have some conference decisions and I, I, don't wanna, I wanna be respectful of that. I think Dan makes a couple of really good points. One is, you know, you might have, and, and Craig said it as well, um, you may have somebody who's played 25 games and 20 and 30 and on, and there's opportunities. There's going to be programs that are going to want to take advantage of that December opportunity once all the classes have ended and, and an opportunity to grow their program. There's other programs that have said initially to, to this point, but we don't want to participate until January 1st. So be respectful of them as well. At the end of the day, I, I think that, you know, whether you're creating a, a pod of teams in a, in a city and, group, and you've got some folks coming together and saying, hey, we're going to play a round robin of, of four or five games in about eight days or something like that. I don't know if that's possible or not. I've heard those conversations. And, and clearly, we've had those on our brain, you know. And so um, I think that there's multiple possibilities here. I think we're, you know, it is our call um, through Craig and through Danny and through, through hopefully the committee that we give them some guidance and some, some direction and say, hey, we're looking forward to, to watching this. And we think it's 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 an exciting time to be think to be creative and to do some things that are unique. Um, I think to sit here and say um, and the old the old strat the hope's no strategy. Well, uh, two things. I have hope, but at the end of the day, we're going to back that up with something tangible. And I think that that's our goal. Is in the next couple of months, we give them some tangible direction. We know the net. We've talked about the net, Andy, and what and what the net does to the net. Um, as it relates to a basketball statistical metric that we use on the committee. So not being able to have anything but conference games, we know that that's, that's a challenge for us in trying to find our way through that, and that puts us another stress in there. So we want to make sure that whatever information we have, uh, we use the valid information we have, and we also use the opportunities we have laid out in front of us, which clearly once uh, students have gone away from campus and they're no longer in classes, that is a unique opportunity for us to, to try and focus on the game of basketball and really grow us into our season. So, Dan, to that point, we now know for sure that the Ivy and the Pac-12, um, at, at this juncture, they've said they're not going to play games before January 1st. Obviously, everything's subject to change, but that's what they've said. Um, so if other teams are playing, how would those conferences be judged uh, if the tournament is on time in March? Well, the committee has wrestled for several weeks now about what the selection criteria and, and, and seating would look like um, if you have just, you know, very different seasons that are being played, um, an inequitable number of games, the mix uh, of conference games only or fewer non-conference games. We've, we've acknowledged that the net and other uh, analytic tools would be compromised potentially in those scenarios. Um, so there's a lot of different um, contingencies that are being considered by the committee. Um, at some point, as Mitch noted, you know there'll be some guidance around that um, that we'll share. Uh, we're not there yet, but we've been wrestling with this now for a couple of months. Um, it, it, it speaks to the imperfect nature of all this, frankly. Um, but the committee is as good and veteran as any that I've worked with in my eight years at the NCAA. Uh, We only have one new committee member. Um, The other nine are seasoned veterans and we have got great leadership with Mitch uh, and Jim Phillips as the vice chair and they will make 
great decisions on the selection of the 36 at-large teams and seeding the tournament throughout. Uh, but it'll probably be somewhat different than it's been in the past. Um, it's necessitated by the unique nature of this upcoming season. Hey, Craig, uh, if you can, for a moment, just put on that Board of Trustees hat from Princeton. Um, if they're not going to play before January 1st, but let's say they want to play January 2nd, that means they got to practice in the month of December. Uh, how much is that potentially going to be allowed in the Ivy at a place like Princeton to at least prepare to play at the beginning of January? Well, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't know if you know, Andy, uh, Princeton has uh, stated now that everything is going to be virtual. There, there will be no one on campus the first semester. So that's going to make it impossible to have practice before the start of the season. Um, and and, and, and as, as Mitch said, even we coaches are going to have to be creative and innovative. We, gotta, we have to be able to get our guys to work out uh, in, in a situation like that on their own and be able to come together and have uh, some sort of training camp. But, you know, it, it, I, ca I can't see it happening before the first of the year. And then, you know, it's going to take you a, a couple of weeks to get guys in game shape. But as a, as a conference in and of itself, the Ivy League might decide to just play inside their, their little conference. And if they, if they feel, um, uh, uh prepared enough to play outside. Um, I go back to what I said before. Everybody has to stay flexible. The dates are set right now in early April in Indianapolis. Um, obviously, people are wondering, to Mitch and to Dan, how flexible is March Madness, is the Final Four in Indianapolis uh, beyond that, whether it's April, May, June, because obviously we all want and need a tournament at some point in 2021. Mitch? Well, you know, I think from a physical facility perspective and, and things that go into the television pieces, I would let Danny, I would defer to Danny on those conversations. Having said this, um, from a, my, my committee hat and my athletic director hat, um, we, will, we will absolutely do all we can do in whatever assets, whatever resources, whatever it takes to try and give our young people a chance to play the game they love. You know, we, we, there is not a fan out there um, that I have talked to. I, I walk outside of my house this morning and the three women walking down the street say, hey, are we going to play sports this year? And I'm going, you know, okay, every day, that's the question. You know, are we going to get to play? I just walk up on campus and you go see some our young people practicing and working out and they're saying, do we get to play? Uh, I don't think there's ever been a more, a greater appetite for us to get off Netflix, for us to get off some of the things we've been watching nightly and you're saying, give us something. And so the, the absence of March Madness was absolutely difficult for our country. I mean, we can laugh, we can all talk about how that eh, really shouldn't be that way, but the reality was it is something we all rally around. It's a, it's a cultural piece of something that's so important to the fabric of, of spring. And so I'm not willing to give that up in any way, shape or form. Uh, we wanna plow ahead, we're gonna do everything we can resource wise, facility wise, um, and I will tell you from the committee's perspective, we're fully committed to try and find a way to whatever end uh, to make sure that this tournament gives us a chance to play college basketball on the highest stage. Dan, I'll let you have the last word here. Sure. Well, you know, the, uh, the March Madness is a very complex event. And, you know, it happens because we have 14 incredible hosts from Dayton in the first four through Indianapolis in the final four. And that's the case every year. And we've got incredible television partners in CBS and Turner. And to make the tournament happen has to be inclusive of all of those incredible partners. That's why it's been an 80 year long event that's so special that we all love so much. Um, we have preached as Craig's mentioned, you know, flexibility and patience with our coaches and administrators. Uh, we're going to exercise that among ourselves as well as it relates to the tournament. Uh, our first and primary goal and preference is to have the tournament on the dates that are set at the venues that are predetermined. Um, but if the virus necessitates a different path, uh, we will adjust accordingly. And I think it's really important for fans that watch this video and interview and, and for coaches and administrators to know that there are all sorts of contingencies that are going to be in place. Um, 
we are going to have a tournament. It's going to be special. Uh, we have our preferences about how we'd like to have it be. But if we have to adjust to the virus that we don't control, we will adjust accordingly. And the health and safety of the players and the coaches and all the people around the games, the referees and fans will be primary. Um, but ultimately, it will also include determining a national champion in the fairest and most equitable way that we can under these unusual circumstances. So I think it's important to note we're going to have all sorts of contingencies and, and plans if it's necessitated. We're just not in a position to be able to talk about those in the middle of August um, because that's not what our primary goal is. But at the appropriate time and place, if we need to adjust, we will. We'll be flexible, we'll be nimble, and we'll deliver what the country is you know, desperately looking for again. And that's just an incredible March Madness tournament in 2021. Good to end on a high note. Optimism is what I love to hear. Uh, Dan, Mitch, Craig, appreciate it. I know we're going to continue this conversation. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching.